put it here, or, or you can put it on the back. Put it on the well, I think it's time to start. Can you hear me? Good. Well, obviously, Stephen Hawking doesn't need an introduction, but one thing that is important is that you want to take pictures, please remove the flash. As you will see, he can only communicate through his eye, and therefore, if he gets uh, blurred or uh, you know, this vision, he cannot see, and therefore, he cannot communicate. So you are certainly welcome to take as many pictures as you like, but please make sure that the flash is off. Okay? Anyway, uh, we are really very happy that Geneva University is celebrating its 450th anniversary because as vultures, <laughs> we jumped on their backs to be able to have Stephen Hawking here. So Stephen is going to speak uh, today here, slightly more technical talk. Next week he will give a public talk in Geneva University in Unimai, and I guess that you are all welcome to go. Now, without any further ado, I would like to introduce you to Professor Stephen Hawking. Can you hear me? According to the page Indians, in the beginning nothing existed, only darkness was everywhere. Suddenly, a thin disc emerged from the darkness, one side yellow, and the other white, appearing suspended in midair. Beginning, but had existed forever. 
For example, Aristotle, the most famous of the Greek philosophers, believed the universe had existed forever. Something eternal is more perfect than something created. He suggested the reason we see progress was that floods or other natural disasters had repeatedly set civilization back to the beginning. The motivation for believing in an eternal universe was the desire to avoid invoking divine intervention to create the universe and set it going. Conversely, those who believe the universe had a beginning used it as an argument for the existence of God as the first cause or prime mover of the universe. This division of opinion has continued to the present day. Many scientists have felt it necessary to believe that the universe has existed forever in order to avoid a moment of creation at which the laws of physics broke down and one would have to invoke a divine creator. For example, while it worked the steady state theory in order to avoid a breakdown of physics at the Big Bang. Although in its original form, the steady state theory was ruled out by observation, it has been revived with a much higher expansion rate by the idea that there is eternal inflation in the early universe. Again, this avoids a beginning, a moment of creation. A similar motivation seems to exist for the pre-Big Bang and ectorotic universes. <laughs> the aim of this lecture is to show that the universe can have a beginning without any breakdown in the laws of physics. Quantum theory causes universes to be spontaneously created out of nothing. The amplitude for this can be calculated using standard techniques applied in a non-standard way. Feynman's idea of a sum over histories, the quantum state of the universe at the present time is given by a path integral over all fields that interpolate between an initial surface and the present surface. This is standard quantum field theory. The non-standard part is that hurdle and I showed there is a non-zero amplitude for the final state, even when there is no initial surface. This is given by a path integral over all fields on a region whose only boundary is the final surface. One might well ask, how can there be a region with a final surface, but no initial surface? This is indeed impossible with a real space-time metric unless it has closed time-like curves and violations of causality. <laughs> However, in order to define path integrals, it is necessary to wick rotate them. One changes the time coordinate, T, to imaginary time, tau equals i t. This changes the Lorentzian metric of Minkowski space to the positive definite metric of Euclidean space. The path integral becomes an integral over a damped exponential rather than a solitary. that in quantum 
quantum gravity one should take the path in the globe to the overall positive definite matrix. The so-called Euclidean approach to quantum gravity has been very successful with black holes and is the basis of the ADS-CFT correspondence. The obvious interpretation of the amplitude for a final surface, but no initial surface, is that it is the amplitude for the spontaneous creation of universes out of nothing. Given that this amplitude is non-zero, it is reasonable to suppose that it is the total amplitude, and that there is no contribution from initial surfaces. This is called the no-boundary proposal. It implies that the universe is self-contained and determined by the laws of physics alone. There are no initial conditions set by a supernatural agency. Describe the consequences of the no boundary condition for the universe. This is based on joint work with Jim Hurdle and Thomas Hertog. I shall assume that the universe contains one or more scalar fields, phi i. For simplicity, I shall describe the case of a single scalar field but the extension to many fields is straightforward. The scalar fields will have a potential, V. I shall assume that V is positive everywhere and has a small positive minimum value, V0, at phi equals zero. Then for small phi, V will be quadratic, plus a constant. The amplitude for spontaneously created universes, psi, will be a functional of the metric, H, of the final surface, and the scalar field on the surface. Psi is given by a path integral over all metrics and scalar fields on a region whose only boundary is the final surface. Psi can be estimated by the saddle point approximation. The prefactor, A, is normally ignored and set to 1. For small final surfaces, the solution of the classical field equations will have a positive definite or Euclidean metric, and the action, V, will be real. However, for large final surfaces, the solution and the action will be complex. solutions will be semi-classical, with the imaginary part of the action varying much more rapidly than the real part. They will tend to real spacetimes at large radius. Thus there is an amplitude for universes to be spontaneously created out of nothing. for spontaneously created universes would dominate any pre-existing amplitude. It is therefore reasonable to assume that the amplitude for spontaneously created universes would be the whole amplitude. This is the no-boundary condition. What does the no-boundary condition predict for the universe?
To answer this, one needs to study outside. The amplitude for a spontaneously created universe depends on the present state of the universe. Consider first the amplitude for a homogeneous isotropic present state. This will be given by solving the field equations for a region bounded by a pre sphere of radius A, on which there is a homogeneous scalar field, phi. Start with the scalar field, phi 1, at the center of the sphere, and integrate outwards. This can be interpreted as the universe starting with the field, phi 1, and rolling down the potential hill, to the minimum at phi equals 0. The real part of the action of the solution is approximately minus 1 over v1, the value of the potential at phi 1. Using units in which the Planck constant, the speed of light, and Newton's constant are one. I am also ignoring numerical factors. The wave function, psi, will be strongly peaked for phi 1 close to the minimum of the potential at phi equals zero, and will be exponentially damped away from the minimum. At first sight, this would seem to imply that the universe started with phi 1 near 0. Such a universe would be an empty sitter like space, rather than the matter-filled universe we observe, with an early period of very high density. explanation for this discrepancy is that so far we have considered the wave function only for homogeneous isotropic universes. This is what one could measure if one could observe the whole of the surface at the present time. But we are angels with a view of the whole universe. Instead, we can see only a small part of the surface, roughly a patch of size the present Hubble radius. There will be many such patches on the final surface. Thus the probability distribution for the initial field, phi 1, will be the wave function squared times a weighting factor of the volume of the present universe divided by the present Hubble volume. If the initial field, phi 1, is large and the potential is not too steep, the field will slowly roll down the potential to the minimum at phi equals zero. During the slow roll, the universe will inflate, or expand almost exponentially, by a large factor. The volume weighting will increase the probability of a large initial field, phi 1, and a long period.
period of inflation is the initial potential, V1, a basin inequality known as the eternal inflation condition. This paper slides almost flat initial potentials. If the potential has a local maximum below Planck value, fields that start near this maximum are likely to provide the dominant contribution to the spontaneous creation of universes. They will have a long period of inflation and will have almost exactly the critical density. Such universes would be semi-classical everywhere, so string theory would not be necessary to understand the origin of the universe. If the potential has what is called the landscape form, with many local maxima and minima, there will be many different kinds of universe created. This can explain why we live in a universe that is so remarkably fine-tuned. Only such universes will contain life. I have shown that standard field theory, applied to quantum gravity, leads to the spontaneous creation of universes out of nothing. If there are scalar fields with a general landscape-like potential, there will be many different kinds of universes produced. Some, at least, would be like the universe we observe. We can explain the origin of the universe purely within the realm of science without invoking some supernatural agency. Thank you for listening. I think we have time for one or two questions, if they're not too long. <laughs> no. no questions or comments? Okay.
Okay, well, if there are no more questions or no questions at all, let's thank our speaker again.